<clears throat> yeah, we're live. So, man, it's almost eight o'clock. Well, twenty till. <coughs> Hopefully, everyone's doing good. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to talk about exhaust systems. And the photo that I have up, I'll be showing you in just a little bit. I'll show you. Uh, we'll zoom in on the photo. You can see. But this is an upgrade exhaust system for the 2005, 2006-ish Ford GT. So it was the supercar, the GT40 looking thing. Um, I'm, I'm a previous owner, so I'm familiar with them. I had a 2006 for at least for, I don't know, six or eight months or something like that before I sold it. Should have kept it. They're worth a million dollars now or something like that. Uh, not, not quite a million, but I, they're worth a lot of money, a lot more than I paid for it. But... <clears throat> The interesting thing is this, if you look at this exhaust system, when you look at this, you go, how does, how does that even work? I mean, the exhaust goes in and then comes out like it has to go into this giant box with baffles and, and flows into this big box and then makes it, because we all know that when, when we're trying to flow exhaust, we want a, if we have our choice, if we have our druthers, <laughs> we'd druther have uh, just a straight tube, right? Going out in, in the same direction of flow. Not something that has to make a 180 degree turn. Not something that goes into a big giant common plenum and then has to find its way out. We know that it will. And especially from this exhaust, this exhaust system is actually better than the factory one. I could have shown a photo of the factory exhaust as well. Similar layout. I mean, it goes in and comes out. Um, they, they go in and turn up, I think, and the exhaust goes and turns down. But they go in and out you know, on, on the, um, on the same flange and <laughs> how can that even work? And yet it, it does. It, it, it really is amazing. And this is a, this is a really good example of exhaust doing bizarre, th <clears throat> exhaust doing bizarre things that it shouldn't do. <laughs> it shouldn't work. It goes against everything that we know and that we uh, that we hold true about exhaust systems because we know exhaust has to like like I said it's got to flow out it's got to be a you know big opening so it flows a lot it's got to be going in one direction you want to have it sized enough so it's big enough to flow the kind of uh, exhaust flow that you have for your power level all that stuff has to happen but if you chose a muffler setup for it you would choose a muffler that's a straight through muffler that has perforations or something you wouldn't even choose a muffler that goes in one side of the muffler and then comes out, you know, the other side of the muffler, but that, but that's not straight through. It goes in, hits baffles and goes out the other side. That's how they get a lot of sound out of it. But we know that that that's got to hurt flow, right? Well, what if we ask it to go in and go through all these baffles and then come back out, <laughs> you know, right next to each other that <laughs> goes in, has to make a 180 return. Doesn't even have, you know, I'm sure that it, I haven't looked inside this particular muffler, but I'm sure it does not have a nice radius entry. It doesn't have any arrows in there directing the exhaust. Hey, over here. And when you come into all this chaos in here, you need to make your way over to here, over to this opening in this hole and find a way out. <laughs> um, I have seen other exhaust systems for these that are not what you would call factory replacement for Z4, these four GTs. Basically, it's just a... Um, they're just exhaust, ex like we were talking about, it's exhaust tubing merged together and they go in and make an X pipe and then they come back out. And so it exits out, looks looks very similar, at least on the exit side to what the Ford GT exhaust looks like. It's got the dual tips and stuff. It looks looks awesome. And it sounds obviously a lot better. It's, it's, it's a lot louder because there's no muffler to speak of when they do just the tubing. But this is a upgrade muffler for it, but there's still a muffler there for it. And it's still, you know, because obviously on the factory stuff, this was a 5.4 supercharged combination, made good power. But when it really started to make power is when guys would do what everybody did. You would turn them up. You would take and put either a, what most guys would do is you would put a, uh, a pulley upgrade on it, which was basically a snout so that you could have an interchangeable pulley and you could make the pulley smaller so you could speed the blower up faster. You'd put a bigger throttle body on it. You would put a, an exhaust on it. Some guys would get more elaborate on the supercharger. You'd, you'd take that off. And the, the real upgrade was to get rid of the factory supercharger and then put a Kenny Bell or something on there, something that was bigger and capable of supporting a lot more power because the motor itself would take a lot. I mean, it was, it was easily a four-digit motor. 
um, if you put a, a good supercharger on it. And then if you took that off and put an intake manifold on there and then put turbos on it, even more so. Lots of, uh, in, in back in the day, but even now, um, in fact, all of the guys that are trying to go fast, and including the guys from Mahovitz, who have the standing mile record um, that, that went 300, the first guys to go 300 in the standing mile. I don't know that anybody's done that yet. I know that that other Ford GT that uh, Johnny, whatever his name was, and, and the guys from Fast and Loud or whatever, they, they were bragging about going over 300, but they did it on a really long stretch. That was not the standing mile. It was way longer than that. And they're jumping up and down about, hey, we, we, went, we went fast. Yeah, you, you might as well just go to Bonneville if you're going to do that. But I digress. Um, but if you're going to do that, there lots of guys are, um, you know, if, if they want to go, if they want make, to make lots of power, like, you know, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500 horsepower, whatever, then then they would go with turbos and not, not, not go with the blower. The blower would make life a lot harder and turbos would make so much more power per pound of boost. Um, because you don't have the parasitic loss associated with driving the supercharger. And at these levels, that could be several hundred horsepower. So who, who doesn't want an extra two or 300 horsepower, you know, to add to their total? That's just a good deal. But on the exhaust side, it's interesting that this exhaust was an upgrade from the factory exhaust. And then the real upgrade would be to just get rid of the mufflers and, and have a free flowing exhaust. Although I was amazed at how well the exhaust system works. I mean, it was... Uh, I know I saw a lot of these make, you know, six or 700 horsepower at the tires. And I had an upgrade that we did way back when I had an upgrade that we did on mine. We just did the simple stuff. You did a, a, a programming, a tune. We did a pulley upgrade. We did this exhaust, did this muffler setup in it. And it was a, the car was pretty fun to begin with. Um, when it was stock, it was, you know, it was, it was, especially for the time was, was supercar status. But then when you add a couple hundred more horsepower, you know, it's like everything else that you had a couple hundred more horsepower to. It's just way better. <laughs> um, and I remember riding in one that uh, Mahovitz did. Way, this is way back in the day. This is at, at, after these things first came out. Um, so this is probably before 2010, probably 08 or 09 or something like that. And I remember riding in one um, that he took me for a ride in. And it, was <laughs> and it made a lot more power than the one that I eventually got. But it was... Um, it was impressive. Uh, they, you know, riding in a car like that, the car's all low slung and, and super swoopy. And um, it, it was just an impressive deal. Cause it, I think that that one probably was making, I don't know, seven or 800 or something at the tire. I think, a, I think 800 or so at the tire. And it was, it, it felt like all of that, <laughs> especially from the passenger seat. It feels like an extra few hundred horsepower when you're in the passenger seat compared to being in the driver's seat. But, you know, that's just a perspective thing. But it was very, very cool. But the, but the interesting thing and the, the thing that I want to talk about for tonight is on this exhaust, it's amazing that the exhaust goes in and then finds its way out, that it just did what it was supposed to do. Kind of, you know, we, we would assume that it's building up pressure in there and then and then coming out. And we would assume that that, that would that would ruin the power. And yet I, it, it actually works fairly well. Um, and I've seen this in other instances too, where, uh, the exhaust just does things that it like finds its way and I, it, it really shouldn't. Um, when you see the, how convoluted some of these other mufflers are, like I said, some of these turbo cell mufflers, um, you know, <laughs> that, that shouldn't go through there. It shouldn't work. But I guess if you go in and fill up a volume with pressure, and there's an outlet for it that's going to find its way out. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a stroll down memory, memory lane. Um, I think I still have pictures of that. Mine was red with white stripes. I, I think I, I think I still had photos of it. So I need, I try to make sure that I remember early on when I had my Camaro and then especially after I got the Z in my, my 260 Z, I decided that I would, um, and I think it was my old girlfriend that did this, she took pictures of my cars and she said, you need to have pictures of all the cars because you're probably going to have <laughs> probably going to have a lot of cars. And so I think I have pictures of all the cars that I've had. So I, I want to try to, you know, keep that and maintain it. So they, I'm hope, hoping that they can all be kind of in one book and then I could go back and 
show my kids, hey, look, look at all the cool stuff your dad did. <laughs> yeah, we still don't think are that cool, but that's because, you know, that's how kids are. Okay, so so before I ask the poll, I'm going to show you this photo so you get a better idea of what it looks like. So here you see. <laughs> Well, those are the bent exhaust tips that ultimately come out, but the exhaust goes up into these flanges and then exits out these centers. You can see where the, I'm sure that these have to be baffles in there. And this is the upgraded version of the exhaust. And really, I'm sure that this muffler style was primarily done for packaging the way that the exhaust has to be routed in this mid-engine car. But you can see... <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> I don't think that there was tubing inside that box. I don't think that the tubing goes in and like maybe goes from here over to here, from here over to here. I don't think it did that. Otherwise, there would be no reason for the box unless they were just trying to keep the exhaust heat out. Now, now it makes me wonder if there's, I thought that just, I thought that that just opens up into the box. But we'll see. So the question is, would you run a muffler like this? like the one that I just showed you on your 700 horsepower mod motor. No, 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 no. I've been watching SWAT. Okay, one liter mafia is here. Good evening. Are you going on power tour? I'm, I don't, I've never been on power tour. I've never been on any of those things. I do, right now, I don't have a cool enough car to do it. This might be a perfect uh, chance to ask a question I've been wanting to answer to since I'm in the exhaust phase when I swap. You, you need to just ask it, man. Just <laughs> don't say I'm going to ask a question. Just ask the question. Richard, do you have any videos of a 6 liter or 6.2 boosted with a 469 cam? Yes. And guess what it does? It, it, it does the same thing that every other cam does. It makes some sort of NA power. And then it makes that same sort of power curve under boost. The thumbnail is a photo of that Ford GT uh, exhaust set setup. Well, adding a two inch spacer between a 4154 barrel throttle body and a Holly mid rise inlet manifold increased the runner length. No. I've seen the exhaust setup on a stock performance car. It's the Ford GT 0506. Are X pipes worth the hassle? It depends on how you want your. Trying to get my camera to focus in here. It depends on how you want the exhaust to sound. Um, X pipes sound really good. Has anyone plumbed the late model charger with three inch plumbing? Do, do you have room under there to do that? Does this beat active exhaust? No, the active exhaust is cool from a sound um, from a sound standpoint. Why has nobody tried to run a 4.6.3 valve intake on a 4.6.4 valve? I don't know. Uh, Larry, don't ever use the word thoughts when you're asking a question. That's a no-no. But making the exhaust uh, smaller is not the way to improve power. I like Magnaflow X pipe three inch system and straight straight through mufflers. 
an X pipe or H pipe will change the sound, but it doesn't seem to add many, much power. It didn't on the test that the guys from Engine Masters did. I got to see all the dyno data on that, and it was you, you really got to look to find something. Admiral, the port spacing should be the same, and it should be a pretty simple thing just to make an adapter plate so that you could bolt that man of that three valve manifold, which is a good manifold, bolt that manifold to the adapter plate and the adapter plate to the four valve deal with a um, uh, with a countersunk screw on it. I mean, that shouldn't be too hard. What are your estimated decibel measurements? I on this. On this exhaust system, I don't remember what they were. X pipe can add power when done properly. It's not, it wasn't on the test. What's the best thing to do for exhaust drone? Um, change your exhaust style uh, or change your camshaft. My buddy's 5.3 made 1,100 wheel horsepower through stock manifolds. Yeah, the, the exhaust manifolds would, would not be a problem. On the turbo stuff, um, the exhaust after the turbo would be the concern. Okay, now Q9, 706 stock cam injectors. My short headers are two and a half inches out. And the Y pipe, after the Y pipe merge, should this exhaust be sized like three inch or two inch, two and a three quarters. What what size is your exhaust? A three inch exhaust after the merge would be good. Richard, can you discuss reverse flow motors that use intake for the exhaust? Why do we want to talk about those? It's not a good um, it's not a good setup because you're you're using the small port, the exhaust port, as the intake side, and it doesn't flow nearly as much as the bigger exhaust port does. I mean, it's 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 cool to look at. <laughs> It'd be cool to do a few videos on a boat exhaust. I actually tested a wet um, boat exhaust. We didn't run water through the exhaust, which I wish we would have, but we did run a water cooled jacketed. Um, it was a hardened marine setup. And I did do a comparison of that versus the header on, on my big block that was going to go in a boat that I had that belonged to my stepdad. I, we ended up not getting it running, but I built a motor for it. Um, and we wanted to see how much the, the, that wet um, exhaust, because it was like aluminum, the exhaust was, uh, how much that was worth and or, or how much that hurt power. It did hurt power quite a bit. Or marine engines in general, no information on YouTube about marine engines. Um, a lot of the big blocks that I did are essentially marine engines because they're the blower stuff is all used on, um, you know, jet boats and stuff. Yes, I'd run a motor like that, but only with mechanical cutouts before it. That'd be a good way to do it. Does increasing compression ratio help with lower RPM range torque when adding a cam? Um, ir irrespective of all of the stuff that you're talking about after that, the adding compression adds power everywhere through the curve. No matter, no matter what the camshaft is, no matter whatever, whatever else you're doing, 
adding compression adds power everywhere, including down low. Got my eyes on the dealership. I was working out with a sticker of just over 150 grand. People complained it was three times as much as a, as a Corvette. Person, you can see the extra 100 grand. Well, and I, I remember talking to my relatives about that. Um, I had a 355 Ferrari for a while, and it's a really cool car. It was. Um, and I remember talking to them about, because they had a, one of them had a C6 and the other had a C7. And I remember telling them, I'm like, you're, you know, because they were telling me how fast their cars were and bragging about that stuff. And I'm like, look, there, there's no doubt about it. I said a, a modern Corvette, a C6, um, and the C7, I said, those cars are faster than that Ferrari. I said, but <laughs> I said, you don't have people stopping you while you're driving your car to talk to you. I said, if you set those two cars next to each other, I said, your car will disappear. I said, nobody will even see it. People are not going to ooh and ah over a C6 or a C7 Corvette. I said, they might like it. I said, but it's not Ferrari. And, I, and I'm not saying that because I'm a Ferrari guy. I'm not. I, the Corvette's a, it's a better car. It's, it has a bigger engine, has more torque. It, it does everything that that Ferrari did except better. And you don't have to worry about breaking it. So, but that being said, you have to give props to when you're driving. And that I remember picking up my kids from school because um, that's why I got it. Just so I could drive my kids to and from school, basically. And picking them up for kindergarten and stuff. You know, you were the... You were the cat's meow. Got my Rocket 350 back together. Fired up. Sounds great. Found a good gas leak at the pump where the metal line screws in. Well, good. Yeah, you don't want to have any fuel leaks. Uh, hot mess. The I showed a picture of the muffler earlier. X5 is already in the car from the previous owner, two and a half inch. I assume that's big enough for a forward two big block, a healthy cam and peanut ports. Yeah, that should be fine. Have you ever flipped that exhaust box open to see if the bottom was open? The bot the the box is completely sealed all the way around. Engine Master's challenge, I don't think, is a thing anymore. First twin to turbo early GT40, uh, Ford GT, I think you mean. Is that what you're talking about? Let's see here's <laughs> pretty colors three inch prime three inch header primary so that's 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 really big have you seen david visor zero loss exhaust street legal sound video i haven't I could figure out an exhaust that sounds good on a 3800. We did a dual three inch exhaust on those um, way back, and it sounded a lot better than the stock stuff, but it's still the V6 is not going to sound great. Yeah, Joshua, you shouldn't worry about it. You're, you're not going to be leaving much on the table for your exhaust setup. Even on a 600 horsepower LS, going from headers and a, and a, and a few feet of three inch tubing and straight through turbo mufflers that lose no power, comparing that setup to a full two and a half inch exhaust, cat, you know, all the way back to the rear over the axle, you know, street exhaust, it was only about 10 horsepower at the 600 horsepower level. So what you're talking about is next to nothing. On a Gen 4, 454, quick fuel, 750, 274 cam. Uh, you're going to have to pick the headers. 
that fit into the chassis that you're doing, but they're going to be inch and seven eighths or two inch headers probably. Is it safe to run a 649 lift on 650 pack springs? You, you should be asking yourself if this is an LS, why would you want to run a 650 lift cam? That's what you should be asking yourself. Looks like a series of baffles that create standing waves while allowing unfettered flow. Richard, on the pole, you mean the suitcase style factory mufflers? Yeah, this 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 in and out on the same side kind of thing. You can tune the drone out with an extra section of tubing. I think we said that you can change the exhaust, right? I heard of old hot rodders do reverse flow on flathead Fords that claim to more power. So on a flathead Ford, it, is the intake and the exhaust are the are the valves maybe the same size? Maybe the maybe the ports are the same size. If a performance exhaust doesn't increase power or torque. So who said that? I'm sure you're the coolest to have the pickup lane. The problem is with that car, you couldn't, like I couldn't leave it anywhere. At least and I... We, we wanted to use it like for date night or whatever and go out, but I don't want to go park it anywhere. I didn't want to park it on the street because if something happened to it, I couldn't afford to fix it or paint it. Somebody scratched it, you know? So you just, we were worried about it all the time, which is why it spent most of its life in the garage. Super traps on individual V8 pipes. Uh, Chancellor, lucky for you, there are endless six liter uh, camshaft videos that I have, and you can pick the power curve that you want. <laughs> super traps on zoomies. That sounds really expensive to buy um, eight super traps. The muffler that I'm talking about is a Ford GT muffler, big, big box thing. Test tri-wise versus long tubes, I'm sure four into one versus an eight into one. As for tor torque pulling away from a stoplight, part throttle. Full exhaust made more power without stabbing the gas pedal. I don't I don't understand what that what that comment is about. Have you tested spin techs? I think the guys from West Tech have run those mufflers. I don't I don't ever remember running those mufflers on anything. I keep the 40, 440 in my Winnebago. Want to have removable zoomies on a valve setup? They have to split into faux zoomies after the collector. Oh, oh, you want flames? I'm thinking that if I run the 4.8 with nitromethane, that it needs to happen on zoomies, right? I mean, that, that actually should have been the pull. <laughs> so we'll make that the pull. We're going to end this pull at split 49.51. So we'll put another pull up here. Okay, should I run zoomies on the 4.8 liter during the nitromethane test? Because you, you kind of see the fire, right? Let's see what people think about that. Richard, have you run any tests on similar cams? Lenati Voodoo. 
500 lift, 209, 213. Not, I don't. I'd have to go back and look at the Hemi stuff to see where I was on the Hemi. Um, how, how? That seems like it's one of the one of those early comp versions for a Hemi. Chrysler. I don't have the Hemi stuff. Remember, three ninety two Hemi, four twenty six. Viper. Five, seven. So we have, we're at a 208, 212 on a 113. So yeah, I have run that on a Gen 3. That's their 260 cam, 260H cam. I have run that. It worked well. What's the max duration before pistons hit valves on a stock? I'm sure you mean LY6, right? I don't know. It's going to depend more on more than just duration. It's going to depend on the actual valve events. But I start measuring anything past 230 or 231. Just picked up a 5.3 Gen 3, gap, gap molly rings, 30,000 rod, king rod bearings, new lifters, push rods, new trays. Going to run 5 PSI on a 76 millimeter turbo carbureted 78 or 750 Pro form. So is it a blow through carburetor? Do you have pre gap rings already to install in, into what? Into the 4.8? The 4.8, if we re gap rings, we re gap the stock rings, not not put new rings in <laughs> new rings. That would just be silly. Uh, may I already be asked, but what about 180 degree header exhaust on some circle track cars? I haven't tested that. I decided that zoomies aren't great without a lot of compression or root supercharger with a lot of surge. <laughs> Uh, Jason, you're not going to get a six liter to pull like a Duramax. If you want that sort of low speed torque, um, a diesel is way better than a gas engine. Did you see Monza's new car, Chevelle, with zoomies? I haven't seen that. Got to do it with the lights off. <laughs> Twin pulls. Yep. What's the best can to maximize low and horsepower on NA62 and 07 Zolly with forged pistons and long tube headers? The stock can that's in there at 2,000 and 2,500 RPM is going to be really oh. hard to beat. You're not going to find a cam that's going to do probably better than that. Not in that range. You make more power after that, but down there, the camshaft has not a lot of effect. Is there a performance loss using square tubing compared to round tubing? I don't know. I, I've never tried that. I mean, um, the square tubing is not going to flow as well um, for its surface area. Not, not, I'm not saying that right. For its area. The corners don't flow very well. That's why when, whenever you do exhaust ports um, uh, or, or on the intake port also, when you have a rectangular port, that's why those kind of went out of vogue. They were big and they flowed a lot. But most of the corners were kind of dead spaces. So that's why the Roval became more in vogue. But I, I think that you could get a um, square tubing to flow. I mean, look what they do to like oval tubing. If you had squared edges, I don't think it would hurt anything. Have you tested blocking the PCV rubber port in a positive displacement manifold and measuring the boost increase for it? 
I don't know what you're talking about. What positive displacement manifold, positive displacement blower manifold has some kind of leak that you must be talking about? I've never seen that. Do you like to use certain size exhaust pipes for get horsepower ranges? Yes, in the higher RPM ranges, but no in the lower RPM ranges. Zoomies are the bent pieces of exhaust that just have, um, the, they're like about this long, let's say, but it's a bent piece of tubing. It just comes off of the header from a flange and just ends basically in an opening. There's no collector, there's no nothing. There, if you look at a top fuel car, they have those. That's what kind of, that's what the, the exhaust is on the top fuel. I have a 2001 8.1. What's the best exhaust setup with HP tuner? I don't know. I don't know about, uh, exhaust systems for dedicated applications. Will it make any difference checking pistons off there until the engine is new and the lifters aren't pumped up full of oil? Yes. If you depress the lifter, you're gonna you're gonna increase piston of or you're gonna you will um, add more piston to valve clearance. What's the highest I've revved? Uh, I think 8,200 or something. Quick question. I, I'm running a twin turbo stage four BTR can without a turbo. Can I still make power? Yes, you can. Um, what motor are you running that in? Uh, because it's more than likely that that's too big of a camshaft for what you're trying to do. That has nothing to do with whether it's a turbo cam or not. It's just too big. If it's like, if it's in a five, three or four, eight, it's more camshaft than you want for a street motor. What and whose yellow car? Oh, this, this one right here. That's mine. It's a Del Sol. And it was my, um, U S touring car championship car that I run when I was running road racing back in the day. Working on a Jeep 62 millimeter throttle body up in the compression ratio. Six into one long tube, roller cam, roller rocker, school. I hope you have a good ventilation system. They do. The the it's very good. Uh R Richard, does he mean the blow-off valve? M maybe, but the blow-off valve doesn't open up um, and, unless you have on the the ones on the blower manifolds only open up if you have, depending on how tight you have the spring set on them. They only open up during a backfire. Yes, the 4 if you have some used rings that are already gapped, spare ones. No, I don't have spare rings. I have the ones that are in the motor. Uh, make sure that when you're asking a question, you don't ask what are, what are my thoughts on that. That's not a that's an open ended question, and I don't like those. Ask a specific question. Cam two twenty six uh, one fifteen. Is that the stage four cam or whatever? Uh, my question isn't about the cam. I know what the cam is. My question is about what motor it's on. Someone told me that splitting to a, to a dual exhaust after a single turbo is not good. I don't know why that would be bad. If it if if splitting to two mufflers improves the exhaust flow after the turbo, it should be good. A hot mess. You're gonna have to look. I don't know what 
I don't know what video that we ran that 260 cam. And I thought I, I thought I did a video where we ran all of those cams. It, it might be the hundred horsepower cam one. You're going to have to look. There's not a lot of, um, I mean, if you go to the Hemi playlist, uh, the NA Hemi playlist, you'll find it. And there, there can't be a lot of videos in that one. He just added 170 horsepower to a 270 horsepower engine just by using bigger injectors and jumping and nitromethane. I watched the video. It's really cool. Uh, in fact, I commented on it um, and, and it is really cool. So here's a, this will give you an idea. I talked to Brulee about this because I was asking him if they had run nitromethane on anything and he hasn't run anything on any NA motors. But the the general consensus is the, the percentage of nitro that you add dictates the power gain. So if you run 10% nitromethane, you're going to increase power by 10%. So if you add 100% nitromethane, if you have enough fuel flow to do that and you tune it properly, you should be able to double the power output of the NA mode. The problem come becoming this um, because we need more than eight and a half times the amount of fuel flow, you can see that that adds up pretty fast. So, you know, even on a 300 horsepower motor, you're talking about, you know... <laughs> You need 2,000 cc injectors. So you've got to have lots and lots of fuel flow. He's like, yeah, that's why they run mechanical injection on that stuff. Richard, I would like to rebuild my LS1 for my Firebird. Is a Chevy distributed LS1, LS6 rebuild kit. Those sloppy seeds too, a good purchase. I don't know what rebuild kit you're talking about. So I don't, I don't know what that is. The Borla XR1 exhaust. I like the Borla stuff. I really like the Alex and his wife. Uh, PD Roush blowers have a port in the manifold valley that dumps boost pressure back to the intake tube. It's called the PCB bubbler to drain any oil from blow by, but is a constant boost leak. Okay, I've never seen that. The ones in the manifold on the pop back insurance house, the ones that I the ones I was talking about, those are on all of the like 671 and 871 old school blower deals. The other ones like Magnus and blowers and Kenny Bells and stuff, they usually have a blow off valve um, that reroutes the, the under cruise reroutes the um, boosted hot air back into the inlet of the blower to help cool it off. Eighty millimeter for a four hundred cubic inch for your first turbo. That, that, that'll be good. Richard, I picked up an eight point one. What's a premium ignition system you would recommend using the factory harness and ECM? I don't know what you mean. Um, everything on the factory ignition system is already enough to make a thousand horsepower on that eight point one. So the factory coil packs <laughs> I might change the spark plugs to a colder unit, but the factory wires, I wouldn't change any of that stuff. It's a six liter with rec port heads, motors built for boost, but might not run a turbo yet. Okay. At least it's a six liter. So if it's not a five, three, then that's that, that cam will work. It's going to be a little soft down low, but, um, not bad. Does ring gap alter compression? No. It might alter dynamic compression just a little bit, but I doubt it. Uh, underdog. No, I understand what you're saying now. I, I understand what that is. That's just an unusual thing. It's not used on a lot of stuff. But depending on how big the hole is that they're talking about, does that go, that must go into the crankcase ventilation setup then, right? The, but does it have a um, does it have a one way check valve or something? You ever tested a wave a wave termination box versus a traditional straight pipe exhaust with the same muffler and pipe size? I don't know what a wave termination box is. I'm not familiar with that phrase for exhaust systems. Uh, 
What bank does a 4.8 liter single turbo go? Uh, Danny, I don't know what you mean. The exhaust, the exhaust merges together and they both go to the single turbo. And where they merge together and where the turbo mounts is going to be a function of the um, of fitment in the chassis. Does the length of pipe leading to an X pipe change the sound or power? Yes, it, I'm sure. I'm sure that it will. Uh, hot mess. It's going to be. It should be Dodge NA because the. I don't think I have Hemi as one of the playlists on there. I'll do a quick search. No, there is a um, there is a Gen three Hemi. Those are snakes. That's not it. <laughs> Gen 3 Hemi NA. I thought that it was in there, but I don't see it actually. I know that I tested it because I used it in my book. Let's take a look here, shall we? Well, obviously, if it's not there, I need to, I need to add it. I don't, I don't see it there actually. Zoom these with the green candles. You got to go down the track with all your candles lit. Beer Hound, what's up? What about crazy 80 to 1 hitters? Those, they do sound good. I've seen some of those run on the chassis dyno side, but I've never seen them tested on the engine dyno. Think back your didgeridoo training. Am I mistaken in thinking that an intake manifold almost 69, 351 won't work on an 85, 351? Why, why would that be different? I have an LS1 in a 90 Chevy truck. Would it be better to put a BTR Stage 4 truck cam in it than a regular BTR Stage 4 cam since it's in a truck? It doesn't matter. I don't know why you're picking a Stage 4 or you're trying to make lots and lots of power. Don't don't think you're going to be happy with that camshaft, but what would be a better setup for a streetcar drag car six liter with a 4L60E? Well, 4L60E is going to break if it's a turbo deal.
Eight into one collectors is so big, but unfortunately negatively affects scavenging. Hmm. Have you seen somebody measure that to know that that's true? You didn't get to do much with the Hemi before it popped. That's not true. I had uh, other Hemis that we did a bunch of stuff with way back in the day. Uh, Star, what does everyone know? Let's scroll back and see if you had made another comment to see what everybody should know because I don't know. Nope. I guess not. I guess not. Everybody knows. No check valve, it's just a 3 8 rubber line straight from the manifold valley back into the intake elbow. Does it go in, does it go in after the throttle body? Let's see. NA nitro drag cars beat PSI blown alcohol drag cars. I don't know how that's possible. I, I have no experience with nitromethane, so all I'm doing is relaying information. But this tracks with what um, this tracks with what Cletus was doing. And I've been told this by several people now that run nitromethane. Gen 3 Hemi Cam Test 2000. I'm sure that, that should be 2006 versus 2017. Are those cams interchangeable? Have you done a test on a Holly low ram? I have not, but I know what it's going to do because it's a very, very short runner intake manifold. So it's going to make less power than a high ram through most of the curve until you got way up in the RPM range. Have you got any updates on the Giveaway Nova? I haven't talked to Oliver for a little while. I need to reach out to him and see what's going on. Do you have approach uh, migrating an EFI tune to accommodate boost from a known good NA set, uh, setup? Yeah, so the way that I do it is if we go from a one bar map what I do is I'll take the top three rows. I'll take the bottom row usually, and then the top three rows. And then what I'll do is we'll plug the top three rows into 100 kPa on a two bar map setup, which will kind of be in the middle. And then we'll plug in the bottom row down at the bottom and we'll interpolate from the bottom up to the top, those top three rows, which are, are in the middle basically. And so that will rescale everything and give you a scale that you had on the NA one. Then I take the top two rows from the NA combination and put them up at the very top of 14.7 of pounds of boost. And then I um, increase those until I've doubled it. And then I scale from there down to the 100 kPa, you know, NA deal and then interpolate that. So what you've done is now you have twice as much fuel flow at 14.7 pounds of boost as you had NA. The reality is what we do then is I'll go in and add another 10 or 15% on the turbos on the boosted side because you're going to not run, you know, 12 or 13 to 1. You're going to run 11 to 1. So you're going to be using more fuel. But when I do that, 
it starts and runs and will take throttle and do all that stuff. And then, then I just whittle away from there. Uh, frequency. I don't know. <coughs> I don't know what the difference is between a competition long tube and a long tube. You just need to put long tube headers on it. Anything else that you do beyond that is just going to be nitpicking, and I wouldn't worry about it. Four hundred one headers are supposed to melt down with nitromethane. Don't know why that would be the case. see. Yeah, James, that stage four truck cam and a six liter truck will definitely not work well. Yeah, it's just, it's way too much camshaft. You, you, you'd be unhappy with it. You would, if the guy that wants to put that in there, I just don't recommend it. I would recommend a stage two or something. You'll be much happier with that because in the RPM range that you're going to be using the most, you're going to be much happier with a smaller camshaft. I put that 274 cam in my 4.6 Mustang and hated it. Even though on the dyno, it definitely made a lot more power. But the area where it made less power than the stock camshaft was where I spent most of the time. George, you have zoomies for an LS that you don't need anymore? What did, what did you guys run them on? Richard, have you ever thought of building a car from scratch? Not from scratch. We have built cars um, for... Uh, like road race cars and Bonneville cars, which seemed like we were building from scratch because we had to take out all the stuff. <laughs> what cam would you recommend trying to make a 500 horsepower LS1? I have videos up on LS1 stuff. Um, so you could see, but any of those 231 cams would, if you have a good intake manifold, and especially if you have ported heads on LS1, 500 horsepower is not hard to do. Three eighths line is after the throttle body hooks directly to the intake. Level. So it's in it's in front of the throttle body, not between the throttle body and the blower. It's in the intake track before the throttle body. So they're trying to draw the oil vapor back into the motor. Uh, hoping to finally replace my spark plug wires this weekend. Um, <clears throat> there's two rear water ports that can be routed to a water neck riser. We don't normally run those on big blocks. What's the maximum cam duration you've run on what? Uh, what percentage of nitro are we going to run? We're going to start off small and then go to all of it. How can I figure out throttle body size for what? What are you trying to figure out a throttle body size for?
uh, underdog. Okay, so it's between the throttle body and the supercharger. Because what I'm trying to find out is under D cell, when the throttle body is partly closed, it has a vacuum on it. Got to start working on your Fox or the Z. Yep. Sanka, you dead? Yeah, man. Cool runnings. Did you try long tubes on a 30% nitromethane to see if it holds up or melts down? I don't think it's going to melt down. Um, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. We run long tubes on turbo applications. I don't know that the nitromethane is going to get any hotter than that. And I know that guys that are running nitromethane do it like on the four cylinder stuff. They use full headers when they do that. What is the baseline power of your experimental nitro engine? It's um, like 330 horsepower is what a stock 4.8 does. Is there a formula to figure out horsepower from the fuel flow of E85? No, you could figure out potential. You don't know what the air fuel ratio is, though. And you don't know what the brake specific fuel consumption number is. Oh, you must do it like the Swiss. Any plans on a five liter and five eight truck intake manifolds? I would like to do that. Bill, what's going on? Thank you very much. Did you have a question? Uh, you know, throw you throw a couple of bucks out there, especially like that. It's big money. You, you get a you get a question. Yeah, it's 333 horsepower, I think is what the 330, yeah, something like that is what the is what the stock 4.8s normally make. We want to start out low, like I said, so that we have enough injector to get where we need to go. But I suspect that we're going to double the power output if we get it so that it's tuned on 100% nitromethane. But it, but it might be that if we could continually add nitromethane that we could keep going up in power if we keep adding more and more. If that, and if that, the guy that's asking about the PCV deal, if that comes up as a hose, does it, is, is all this stuff internal in the blower or does it come up externally? I mean, you could just plug it and see what happens. Well, so can there's no prior checking piston valve give an accurate reading. N no. Um, what we do is we run a checker spring. If you have a if you have the standard spring in there, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna use the open bucket transfer method for your nitro. We have a fuel tank. How long are the dyno poles going to be? I don't know what you mean. We'll, we'll go from 3,000 to 6,000 or 6,500 or whatever. Yeah, John, actually, the reason that I want to do this is because Cletus, I, I watched the Cletus's video. He you know, saw a lifter to check this in the valve clearance. <coughs> well, we don't need a solid lifter. You, need, you can use a hydraulic lifter, but it has to stay pumped up. And that's why we use a checker spring because it will stay. If the solid, if the hydraulic roller is pumped up um, and it doesn't go away, then you can use it. <laughs> Sometimes we just take the hydraulic plunger out and stack stuff up in there and use that, or you could use a solid one.
80, let's see, where are we at? Uh, should I run zoomies on the test? 83% saying yes. So well, who are the people that are saying no to that? Knuckleheads. One more minute. <laughs> I'll go to live chat for one minute. Uh, underdog, that's something I could test. I could put a th three eights is pretty big. Um, I could put a three eights hole in a discharge tube and see how much it leaks. I've left out um, like pipe plugs, but I think that they are like eighth pipe stuff. Um, and that didn't change boost. It wasn't even really measurable with an eighth pipe um, left out. We thought it would be a bunch, but it was not. Jamster, thank you very much. And Jamster did boost leaks. Didn't see a lot of horsepower surprisingly. Yeah, you you on a turbo you won't because the turbo will just speed up to <laughs> to to do the desired boost level. So what you're doing is the turbo is flowing the amount that it needs to flow, if you have it set at 10 pounds, it will make 10 pounds. It's just flowing more. It's flowing 10 pounds the, enough to make the 10 pounds plus whatever the boost leak is. On a centrifugal supercharger, on a root supercharger, you'd be more likely to see the loss than you would on a turbo because none of those are um, self-compensating the way that turbo is. How do I figure out the throttle body of a Chrysler Crossfire? You just measure it. If you want to figure out what the stock one is. A few weeks ago, I hear you're doing a transmission shifting and gear selection mathematics. Yeah, I want to, I do want to do that. I don't know when I'll do that yet though. I took the dogs, the puppies for the first official run today. We went out and um, I didn't even take Milo with me. I just took the two puppies and they ran like champs. We, we did hills and everything. The um, they're, they're dramatically different. The two puppies are. One of them is, is the leader of the pack kind of guy. The other one was, ah, I don't really care. <laughs> but the leader of the pack dog, that's Bruno, aptly named. Um he wants to take over for Milo for the older golden retriever, the 13 year old that we have. He wants to be the leader of the pack. Um, and he runs like it. He, he, he can already easily outrun me. <laughs> yeah, it was good. They, they've been, we've been taking them for hikes up in the hills a lot and they, they've been doing, I mean, these are pretty substantial hills and they just, it's nice to have them because they, they're like sled dog. And I mean, they're pulling me right up. It's awesome. Be nice when they get a little bit more control, but but you know that's all part of it. And on that note, I'm still working on my Ford video 302, 347 stuff, specific outputs. You know, lots of cool data. But I will see you guys all tomorrow. Oh wait, I'll I'll answer one more question. <laughs> I'm here. Completely off topic. How do you feel about piston swapping? I think it's a good idea. I have a 4 8 on a turbo piston. Is uh, B just want to swap it for another flat top? Yeah, I if you if it's a stock flat top, I wouldn't have any problem putting another stock flat top on in place of that. Is the Nitro Test supercharged? No, it will be just be an, a stock NA 4 8. Is nitro a supercharged or do you need downforce? If you do not need downforce, then weed burners make no difference. In a supercharger, then headers would work better, but large volume of exhaust. Okay. Do you use nitromethane <laughs> 50 70 oil? I don't think we'll need to do that, but I'm sure that it will need an oil change after we do the test. Just like, but I'm not just going to run nitromethane. I'm going to run gas and methanol and then nitromethane. Brian, Brian and I had a good conversation. We're going to do a video on 
um, testing that they did on gas and E85 and, and methanol on port injected stuff and on direct injected stuff. So lots of, lots of cool stuff. So I'm, I'm working on doing that, uh, doing the interview process. Thank you guys all for showing up. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam.